one correspondent, Natalia Gomenyuk, spent seven days or, or roughly a week in the east, uh, in Donbass and in Donetsk there. Uh, and you know, people need to understand that that is very rare, especially for Ukrainian journalists. That's quite difficult. Uh, they've been, are in danger in the East, people have been held, especially previously in Slavyansk. So having that kind of access, especially for Ukrainians going there, is unique. So we have some footage here we're going to show first of, uh, of the situation out in the East. So yeah, that was um, um, that we can also follow and watch the the, the the old clip, and there would be more reports with English subtitles uh, that you can follow after. And um, oh. yeah, it's important to say that yeah, it's true that it's very hard for the Ukrainian journalists to be there, and it has created a huge gap and a huge misunderstanding of the situation on the ground here in Kiev. What don't people understand? What I think so they don't understand the gravity of the situation. We, for a foreign audience, also should explain that there are roughly four and a half, five million people living. It's the most populated area in Ukraine. And for many months, they uh, couldn't receive their salaries, pension, the government employees. And there are a lot of people who are depends on the uh, subsidies from well, the state. I, I find that very interesting because many people, you know, in Ukraine, outside of the separatist control areas, want to take a hard line. They agree with cutting them off. There, there, there are some, but and this is a huge misunderstanding because, uh, you know, you, you definitely understand that the separatists, they, they are not a state, they are not incapable. Uh, wherever you think about them, you know, call them uh, fighters, call them, you know, there are these armed groups. But the winter is coming. There are people who more or less let without the food, without the shelters. Um, I visited a few shelters where people living for four or five months. Um, and when we talk about the pensioners, they had some savings. And they mainly stopped to receive the money physically in June, August, mm -hmm. July. And they are already have sold, have, have spent everything which was there. And, um, and besides the food, which was, you know, in summer it's easier. You can get the food from your garden. It's almost over. And now without this, it's for many, many people, the winter would be really, really tough. It would be brutal and dramatic. What and were people expecting? Did they have a plan for how to survive, or were they waiting for assistance from different charity groups? Uh, the uh, people do not have a plan. They couldn't expect it would happen. And there is some random support. And important to understand that there are extremely brave, great people in Donetsk, the volunteer groups like responsible citizens of Donbass, which mm -hmm took a plea, they've taken a plea that they won't ever support anybody with the arms. Oh, they've taken an oath not to yeah, take that, a side. Because okay. that's the way they can operate. <laughs> and uh, wherever you think we have, we've heard a lot of problems in summer that the separatists won't accept, you know, the trucks from Ukraine with the humanitarian aid. It's not the case for the last months. Um, so there are mainly international organizations who bring some food and maybe medicine. And we also should speak about some special, you know, orphanage houses, psychiatric hospitals. Hospitals, hospital, nothing was really evacuate, has been evacuated. I mean, orphan houses maybe, but in general, that things uh, ha wasn't evacuating. So the volunteers, they come to the shelters, bring the very basic ration of food, uh, maybe some special, um, you know, treatment, but it's not just for wounded, you know, there are a lot of people with uh, uh, chronic disease, and it's a matter of life and death. Was there heating in homes, or what's the situation with the heating? The heating there? is there, the heating is there, the water is there, and for a lot of people, maybe hard to understand that it's still a waste, waste area, mm -hmm. and the life, you know, the people live their life. Um, when you just in 
center of Donetsk, besides all the separatist uh, billboards, you don't see the big difference. It's still 800,000 people trying to live their life with all the troubles. Uh, but I think that what we should follow, the way what will be the discussion between the Ukrainian government, uh, which should be for us as a Ukrainian citizen, I'm a Ukrainian citizen, it's an obligation of a Ukrainian citizen uh, state to, um, you know, to, because it's a natural well, the right. The has to provide. Yeah, to, to provide, to provide, uh, to provide. And they explain, I try to have a debate with the people from cabinet of for Ukrainian government to explain the situation. The point is, the answer of the Ukrainian government is that the people can move away and that there is a procedure, complicated procedure to re-register. But in fact, they cannot, that many people cannot leave. There the systems are already overloaded. I mean, we've had people on that they really, you know, they do a good job, many of them, but they struggle. And that's not just the state, it's private yeah, organizations too. Yeah, and the private organization, but, you know, it's a too many people in the in the world while They will not that, that you can have a heavily populated area uh, can be moved away. So there is an issue the way how this help would be brought mm. uh, to the region. And and my, maybe it would be the speculation that uh, there is a way, um, even if it would be marked with, I don't know, some kind of things that is cash or support from the Ukrainian state, that it should be there, but wherever you think on the separatists, you know, you can, you should do that on their way. But still, you know, it's tough. There are armed people, um, political... What surprised you the most? I mean, what didn't you expect, since I know you hadn't been there for a little uh, while? No, I mean, for me, what is very, very um, difficult to see how, um, how hard, how bad is the situation with, you know, especially with the pensioners. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's very hard uh, personally to see that Kiev is doing really well. I mean, it's still complicated. The cri we talk a lot about the crisis, but it's uncomparable. There are very basic things. People won't put some, you know, like they would stop their fridge uh, because it's too much. It's cold. You can put the food outside because the fridge uh, uses too much energy. And these small details are striking. Um, so, and yeah, of course you can see, for me, of course, you see the, you know, armed people everywhere, you know, they're in the buses somewhere and, you know, you should keep an eye on that. And of course, it's what is really to understand that there is this absolute split between the armed groups and people who are running these separate republics and the general population. Because, I mean, these guys, when you go to the expensive hotel where the foreign journalists stay and the foreign organization are based, mm. you know, like everybody would have a, like a, you know, like it's normal, like an expensive meal, also the armed guys, mm. you know, and so this blockade, wherever you call it, it doesn't matter at all for the separatists themselves. Well, fascinating. It's great to have these reports from people who are going there.